Hi guys, my name is Alex. In this quick tutorial I'm going to try to explain how you can set up uh, and render this kind of turntable effect in 3ds Max and using After Effects uh, to add such a uh, logo to your uh, design. So, let's get started. In your uh, 3ds Max or Miles or similar uh, 3D software you just open a file that has that contains your 3D model that you want to render and then just go to the top view top view and then just go to create uh, and what is this? geometry plane and draw a simple plane uh, center it by right clicking on select and move and right clicking on this two values and pressing M on the keyboard to, to open up a material editor I already set up a uh, material for the floor which is just the plain 10 10 10 RGB color and I will just apply it to the selected selected or may I have may I say uh, created uh, Plane. So the next thing it will be to make sure it sits on the canvas. Well, yep, a little bit too high. Okay. Then I just go back to the top view and create a camera, target camera, and then just click and drag. It doesn't really matter where it points because we're going to use but under create shapes uh, circle. We're going to create a circle, which is going to be the path for the movement of this camera. So we are going to center it by right clicking, select move, and right clicking on these values and then just on the left view we're going to pull it up a little bit and on the top view again we're going to select the camera and go to animation constraint path constraint and we're going to click on the circle that we just created and the camera will align it to the to the path that we could be we created but before we do that I'm going to undo that you should set up the the the, the duration of your uh, turntable. So go down here to time configuration and set up a value in this uh, end time. So I was aiming for 10 seconds turntable for with uh, 24 frames per second. So 24 times 10 seconds it ends up in 20 to 240 uh, frames. And after we set it this duration, we can go to animation constraint and path constraint. Now we just select uh, the target of the camera and pressing Alt A on the keyboard and selecting the object that we want to uh, have camera uh, turned around. So just uh, select. X, Y, and Z position on the pivot point, and click OK. So we can see we have this aligned. So if we want to raise or uh, set it a little bit lower, we just need to select we just need to select the circle and pull it up or down and we can see that the camera is attached so we can move the camera this way and if we want to uh, push it uh, outwards or inwards we just go here to modifiers of the circle and and play with the radius of the circle to move the camera with it so by pressing shift f on the keyboard we can uh, see what the output uh, render will be so we can set up 
the camera view by pressing C on the keyboard. So this would be the the end result of the of the render, which is not quite okay. So we just, as I showed before. We just play with the settings of, of the position of the circle and uh, its radius and we can click on the camera and set up a uh, different lens and then just play a little bit with uh, settings again. So you get the picture. I'm not going to do it perfect here. So next thing it would be to set up some lighting system if you want it because if you render out now I just need to check something before I... okay you can see it's pretty flat it has no, no, no uh, shadows uh, it's okay, but it's not really what I was looking for. So I will set up uh, the light system. I will use standard Omni lights, only Omni Omni lights. So I'm gonna click it and use shadows shadow map because under uh, render setup I assigned a default scanline renderer to it because it's really fast and it will help me uh, render 240 keyframes in, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. So back to the lights. I just created the light. Uh, I'm going to pull it up a little bit. And in the top view we can see we have this uh, camera view and we're going to use this light as a main light. I'm going to right click and click here to to set up our uh, values so we're going to use shadows map size we're going to use 512 and uh, sample range sample range it's going to be 20 so if we uh, So if we render out now, we can see we have a slight shadow and it's not crisp because we added a larger uh, amount for map size and a sample range of 20. Then it's, then it's all up to uh, reposition the light. I'm not going to do it perfect here. I'm just just going to hold shift and click and drag to the other side, which is going to be a copy of uh, this Omni light, and I'm going to refresh, and I'm going to set this to 0.8, which is a little bit less intense. Leave the rest uh, as it is, so it gets shadows with shadow maps, map size 512, and sample range 20. Then I'm going to click and drag it to the back. It's going to be a backlight. This this one is going not uh, cast shadows and it's going to use 64 as a map size and a 10 sample, uh, sample range. And another one will be holding shift and click and drag. Will be just uh, ambient light with point one intensity and the rest is okay I'm just going to go to uh, here what is this modifier and I'm going to go under, 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 under advanced effects I'm going to click ambient only so let's see what this does to our model we can see it has uh, lighten up a lot our model and we have this light shadow uh, from the main light and this light shadow of the fill light and we have some backlighting from our backlight.
So you can play around with uh, the settings of the multipliers to, to get a little bit more, uh, I don't know, contrast of to your model. But after you are satisfied with it, you just go up here to render setup and select active time segment and then just uh, I don't know play with the settings you want to have and again go back to your view and reposition the the camera so it's going to look nice then back to back to render setup we are going to click here on files on the render, render output and we're just going to select the map, uh, the folder that we want to render to save uh, this uh, to and just select uh, a file format. I used JPEG and click uh, save. Then just click render and wait for about 10 minutes and it will end up in a big list of 240 uh, keyframes of your object. Then you open up After Effects and double click on the project and then just go to the folder that you uh, saved your images to and select all of them and press on JPEG sequence and just click open and it will open all images as a sequence then right click on it interpret footage footage and click on main we are going to set the frames per second that we chose for our uh, render in my case it was 24 click OK then just click drag it into the composition it will automatically create the composition um, and if you have some sort of uh, some sort of uh, logo that you want to uh, add to the to your presentation just click and drag and by on these points and then just by clicking on this, uh, so you have this uh, selected with the orange, you go up to composition and add the render queue. And on the looseless, you just select whatever you want. I normally use QuickTime, and on the format, format option, you just select the video codec that you like. I use MPEG 4 video, which is okay with me, and then just go output to and set click on it and set the folder that you want this uh, movie to be created into and you end up with something like this so this is pretty much it for this tutorial please subscribe to my channel uh, share this uh, video with your friends and till next time bye